You either live by the defaults or you die by them. Germany uses an opt-in system for their organ donors, while Austria uses an opt-out system. And according to a fairly recent study by Eric Johnson and Dan Goldstein, about 12% of Germans are organ donors, while like 99.98% of Austrians are organ donors. Germany uses a default that you're opted out as an organ donor unless you take action to opt in, and Austria uses the default that you're opted in unless you take action to opt out. Most of the time, people just go with the default, and so if you use that, if you understand that, it can become a very powerful business principle. And what I found is usually when I teach people this principle, at first, First, it's kind of like, well, I don't understand why, how, do you, how does defaults apply very often? And then a light bulb starts to go on where it's like, wow, most of the time, most of my people are working by the default and I'm not being purposeful about them. And so let me give a few examples and then kind of how to deploy them to your advantage. Big, big companies actually use this uh, and small companies should. The biggest brands today are ones that have built their brand out of defaults, right? Like, so think about it, Google. Let's just use Google. If you use Gmail or anything else, think about how many times you'll get an email that says a new device logged into your account. If that was you, you don't need to do anything. If it wasn't you, then take action. And that's because they understand the power of defaults. Let me give you some other words for defaults, and this is usually where the light bulb starts to go on. So other words for defaults are recommended, best practice, the standard, the normal path, uh, the most common. You'll start to see this in effective software. If you're creating a form, let's say you're doing software. I've done a couple of software companies. Good usability happens when there's a pre-selected, like let's say you have a list or a list of checkboxes. What's the one that is the most recommended or the most advantageous? Have that one be pre-selected so that somebody has to change in order to do something that's outside of the norm. And this actually brings another example. I'm, I'm doing some consulting work right now for a fairly large company uh, that does travel, like uh, trips and things and they have to acquire visas for their clients. They have a partnership with a company that helps get visas for you in the countries that you're going to be traveling. And it just goes so much better uh, when customers use that company. But they were putting out there, thinking that they were doing the client a service, they were putting all of the options. They were saying, okay, here's how you can get your visa. Option one, option two, option three, option four. As soon as we started switching over to, here's the recommended, and then kind of in smaller area, you know, alternates if you want to use an alternate, if you want to get it yourself, or if you want to, you can, but here's the recommended path. Boom, just like that, all of a sudden people start using the recommended and it saves a bunch of time for both sides because there's a recommended path or a default path. Here's the simplest way that I've ever found. Sometimes with the companies that I work with, we'll start out at the parking lot or at the start of their website and we'll walk it all the way through, all the way down to what I call a happy referring customer, <laughs> right? And then what we'll do is we'll write down all of the steps and we'll say, let's start with what is an ideal customer? Like think of the last one or the last five that just went so smooth, so well, what did they do? Did they use this company for the visas? How did that happen? What happened there? Write all of those down. Like what happened when it went really smoothly? And then start to go back through each of those steps and figure out, is there an area here that I can say, this is the recommended path. This is the default. And when you start doing that, when you start actually recommending or encouraging or funneling your clients, for example, or your employees into the smoothest path, You'll be surprised at how many of them actually want that. They want you to tell them what's the best way to do this. You're the experienced one. <laughs> and so I'm hoping that you can tell me how to do it best. Okay, so that's defaults. Uh, another flow tool uh, that you can put in your tool belt. One of the things that you can insert into your business to create freedom instead of having to firefight and do all the work all the time. And we're gonna be putting these types of little flow tips and flow tools out regularly. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button uh, so that you'll get those as they come out.